The first question is, is the Bible the word of God? Uh, did you want to start with that? Or did you want me to start? I have some things I'd like to talk to you about also. And, and by the uh, way, this is meant to be a, a dialogue. So let's try to okay. keep it as a dialogue. Okay. It's up to you, Bernie, whatever you want to do. Well, I mean, is the Bible the word of God? Um, I can give you... I, I got four things to say. Number one, I don't believe God exists, so of course not. It's the Word of God. I don't think it's the Word of God. Number two, I would say, what does Word of God even mean? Because obviously, even you don't believe it's the literal Word of God as far as, you know, words from God's mouth. Because like the Muslims, for example, they say the Quran is the Word of God, and these words eternally existed, and they're the exact words. And I don't think you're going that far even for what the Word of God is. And then um, I wanted to... If we have time, I wanted to give a quote from N.T. Wright, who I know is your, one of your favorite scholars. And he talks about why he's not a Bible inerratist. And I don't know if you're an inerratist or not, but I thought that might be an interesting discussion. So I'll start with that and, and see how you respond. Okay. Um, well, I think from, for me, from my understanding, is um, uh, Bertrand Russell... Um, if I remember rightly, I've just had a quote. I'm oh, sorry, I, I am. Bertrand Russell says uh, that, that man is a product of causes which has no prevision of the end to be achieving, that his origin, his growth, his hopes, his fears, his loves, his beliefs about the outcome of accidental coalition of atoms, that no fire, no heroism, no intensity of thought and feeling can preserve an individual life beyond the grave that all labors of the ages, all the devotion, all the inspiration, all the noonday brightness of human genuine are destined to extinction. And the whole temple of man's achievements must inevitably be buried. All these things, if not quite beyond dispute, are yet so nearly certain that no philosophy which rejects them can hold to stand. Only within the scaffolding of these truths, only can the soul's habitation henceforth be safely built. Bertrand Russell, why I am not a Christian. And for me, the reason why I believe the Bible is it gives me an understanding of history, an understanding of logic, an understanding of morality, where there is meaning, where if I took your position, I would end up what Russell says, is that everything has no meaning and everything's pointless. Well, you know, I mean, a couple of ideas I have. I mean, first off, I think we have to believe what is true. So... If what Bertrand Russell said is true, I, I don't think we can say, like, well, let's not do it. Let's believe the Bible instead because it makes me feel good. I think we want to agree that we have to follow what's true. Yeah, but even it, but if we grant your position and if we grant Russell's, there is no truth because there is no meaning, there is no purpose. There's the Christian position, if you believe the Bible, where it says, where it says in uh, Psalm 1, blessed is the man not walk it in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stand it in the way of sinners, nor sit in the seat of the scornful, but his delight is in the Lord, law of the Lord, and, and in the Lord that we meditate day and night. If we believe that, we believe it with, there's a rational basis, because it's saying there's a God, there's a law. Uh, and what that means is, if there is a God, for example, it gives a basis for rationality. For example, if there's, if there, if there, um, if there are no... I've got a, 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 an argument here. Is no, if there are no logical absolutes without God. We have logical absolutes. Therefore, there is a God. Well, okay, so but, if, but, but hold on a second. We're going off the... We, gotta make, we only have 10 minutes here, and our, our, our question is supposed to be about the Bible. Is the Bible the Word of God? And now we're going off on morality and objective morals. No, 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 because the Bible... No, because the whole point is, is that Russell is saying there's no meaning to history. The Bible is saying that... There is this God, and that there is this law, and that is the foundation of, of Christianity, that there is a God, there is law, and then there is Christ. That's the basic foundation. And, and if you take that presupposition, God, that presupposition helps you to understand why we have logic, why we have reason. It, it helps us to understand why we have morality. And your position, this position of evolution, which you bang on about, and which also is, is, is trying to bring out the implications, doesn't give any meaning or purpose to rationality or morality or anything like that. So when you're attacking the Bible, you've got no rational foundation. You've got no moral foundation to do that. 
Well, I think I have a moral yeah. foundation. I don't think it's that complicated to understand. I, I don't think you need more God for morals at all, and I don't think it's complicated. Well, you, I have a example, foundation. If God does, well, well, the thing is, the thing is, you've not dealt with the argument about logical absolutes. No logical. Uh, there can be no logical absolutes without God. We have logical absolutes, therefore there, there is a God. And for example, you you admitted uh, in our last discussion that um, the law of non-contradiction is immaterial, and you're a naturalist. And as a naturalist, you don't want to admit that the physicality of your position and connect the dots between immaterial logic and physicality. So, for example, if I believe that the God, if I believe the Bible, and it tells me there's a God. And then I'm trying to think about what rationality is. It helps me to connect the dots. If God's rational, and it helps me to understand that why logic is immaterial and why we can have logical absolutes. Whereas you're going to attack the Bible, criticize the Bible, say things about the Bible, but you're going to use reason to do that, yet you can't account for reason. You're going to attack the Bible on morality, but yet you can't account for morality because in your situation, you've got two problems. You've got one problem is that nature doesn't tell you what moral, moral absolutes are. So you have the problem, what is called the is or distinction. Wait, wait a second, wait a second, wait a second. Wait a second. We're, we're getting away from a discussion. I mean, you're kind of going into a lot of, I don't know, maybe a sermon or a one-way discussion here. Why don't you ask me a question or something about the Bible being the Word of God? I mean, I, let me ask you this. Number one, do we both agree that the, at the bottom line, we have to follow what's true. If the Bible, if the Bible is not true, if, if God does not exist, we need to accept that. We agree with that, right? But, if you, but you're assuming what, that there is truth. Of course I'm assuming there's assuming. truth. I have but, no problem no, but, but, no, with because, no, because, No, because in, in, if you read Immanuel Kant's critique of pure reason, he, dealt, he had to deal with two issues. He had to do, deal with evidence and he had to deal with peace of position. So what you like to do, what I've noticed with you, Bernie, I've, I've listened to about eight of your messages today and debates and things. You don't like to get into these kind of issues because you, you like just to push them to the side and you can't push them aside. You can't, you can't assume rationality. You can't assume morality from your, your doctrine. Your basic uh, uh, apologetic in all what you do is basically you use evolution. Evolution is your battery, man. That's your foundation. Now, if that's your foundation, you've got to live logically to that foundation. So when we're coming to the Bible, is the Bible the Word of God? You're wait, 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 wait. You're, you're, wait a minute. You're assuming truth and you're assuming morality. And you've got to account for them before you can even begin, begin the debate. So let's maybe start at the very beginning. You said I have no basis for for logic or no basis for truth as an atheist? Yes, yes. Well, I believe that we can determine the truth through scientific thinking. And the reason okay. why I believe that is because it works. And if there's a better method that works, science will figure it out and it will become a part of the scientific method. There's no God okay. needed for that. And in fact, what oh. happens is as science progresses, it disproves all these God concepts, like, oh, God makes the world go around or something. We find out about gravity and all these other things. Okay. The more oh, we learn about make... science, the more we learn about how the Bible is ancient superstition. Okay. Uh, Thomas Nagel is an atheist. Um, He's been very troubled about evolution, been very, very troubled. And he's a, one of the major philosophers in America. He said, if I believe, the, if I go with evolution, he said, it destroys itself. And I've tried to bring that up to you before. Okay, uh, but, wait, but, but wait a second. The, you say, you say if, if he doesn't believe in evolution, what does he believe in as an atheist? Listen, okay, let me just finish. Let me finish. If I said he's troubled. And it's trouble because it implodes on itself, which I tried to bring up with you before, because it's not a rational basis. That process is not rational. So therefore, when you're trying to be rational, rational your, your own foundation is irrational. And, mm -hmm. and uh, even an atheist like Thomas Nagel mentioned that. So when you're talking about science and uh, the development of science and all the rest of it, your whole foundation is irrational. It, it's, by, it's irrational. You, know, you, you, said, you said my foundation is irrational, but you never explained why. I don't believe it is irrational. I believe my, my, my position is rational. I believe yours is superstitious. 
Well, you've not accounted. You've not accounted. You've not accounted why you said in the last video that logic is immaterial, and you've not actually explained that yet. So, what you know, the debate. What's, what's so hard had, to explain about logic being immaterial? I mean, obviously, logic is immaterial. It's not made out of electrons and protons. That's a concept. Are you? A, but are you a philosophical naturalist? Yes, of course. Yes. So. Is everything that you know physical? Not physical, it's natural. I mean, for example, no, energy you... energy is not physical. Energy uh, does not have any protons or neutrons or anything. But according well, to Einstein, you, you... energy at the Big Bang created the matter. Well, you're not in, you're not in touch with the current current philosophy. If you look at if you go on the Stanford okay. University, what's well, well, okay, well, um, look at philosophic. If you look at philosophical naturalism. You know, it's quite clear if you look at that and what the general scholarship with philosophers, philosophers are in philosophical naturalism. Okay, well, we're, we're the out gen, of... The general, the general uh, consensus of the philosophers who, who take that position uh, are primarily physicalists. Okay, well, we're, so, out of, we're out of time on this question. We had 10 minutes and we're 10 minutes is up. Okay. So we need to go to the next one, and we need to focus on the topics, and we also need to, instead of bringing up like four or five things, we have to bring up just like one subtopic to talk about, because we're not going to have time to talk about three or four different things. Um, well, I, I think that they were, they were central. The Bible, the Bible talks about, is, is, to talk about the Bible, you have to talk about rationality. Okay, so now we're going to talk about okay, the so Bible. Now we're gonna talk about the second topic.